Good morning, everyone. I give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to the Son and the Holy Spirit, the controlling force of my life. <clears throat> I honor all pastors, reverends, ministers, and officers in their respective places. My condolences to the family, and I pray you will seek comfort in the assurance of God's word. Be strong in the Lord. Be not dismayed. For he is with you. He will never leave you, nor will he forsaken you. At this time of sorrow and pain, God will walk you through. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, you are our creator and you are our sustainer. All things are held together in you. Father God, you are the source of all comfort and peace. We thank you, Father God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who through the grace, through his grace and power, has given us a chance to everlasting life. We thank you, Father God, that you are who you are and what you are, O oh God. Father God, we come to you now in the name of Jesus, lifting up this bereaved family before you. Father God, as they walk through this dark valley of sadness and sorrow, Father God, Father God, we ask that you will continue to walk with them, holding them close and undergirding them with your love, through their faith, O oh God, give them comfort, Father God, so that the ones that do not know you, O oh God, the, your son as, your, as their savior, may through this experience, O oh God, witness the faith of others and be granted the strength to repent and forgive and ask for forgiveness for their sins and offer themselves to dedication and service to you, the only one and true and living God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we make our request. Hallelujah. 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 I know this is a sad occasion for the family, but then again, it's a time of celebration that we can thank God for the time that we had Sister Harris here with us for the time we had spent together with her. Remember the good times and remember the way she has passed now, the way she has the walk that she has taken now. We all have to take that walk. So it's best to prepare yourselves on this side because where you get where she is now, it's too late. Amen. Amen. Now we have the reading of the scripture from Eddie. Rogers. I 
I'm sorry, I overlooked selection. Is there, or was there someone supposed to do a selection at this time? No, just get it. Okay, now we have the reading. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to be coming from the Old Testament, the book of Psalms, the 27th chapter, verse 1 through 5. And it reads, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, <clears throat> and my flows came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. The thought of the host should encamp against me. <clears throat> My heart shall not fear. Through war should raise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing I have, desire of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to be on the beauty of the Lord and to the equalist and in his temple. For in the time and trouble, he shall hold me, hide me, and his pavilion, and the secret of his <coughs> trade, trump, excuse me, uh, tablets shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. Thank you. Amen, amen, amen. hallelujah, glory to God. Moving right along. Reflection, two minutes. As a friend, Jackie Beeman, as a brother, Kenneth Austin, and as I know her, is open. God called your name, Ken. You left with that saying goodbye. And October 11, 1921. Even though you are gone, you, you, will never, you will never be forgotten. Your smile, your laugh, your personality. God seen a precious girl. Take your time. <laughs> And has seen, seen, hmm. and has seen your pain tent. God has seen a pet a precious jewel and has seen your pain. He felt everything you were going through. So he said, a job well done, Tips. My good and faithful servant. Your work here is done. Now I would like for you to go and take your rest. In the name of Jesus, Lord, hey, Tips, I'm coming to miss you. I don't have nobody to fuss with me no more. <laughs> and then 30 minutes back, we back together again. Mm -hmm. That's her. That's her. I'm going to miss you. You will be missed, baby. Thank you all.
good afternoon. It's kind of really hard for me to stand up here to say goodbye to my sister. I don't lost two of my beautiful sisters. The Lord had called them home. I am the only brother, living brother, that she left on this side. Family, we gonna miss things. We gonna miss her cards on our birthday. <laughs> We can miss our God on Christmas. For some reason, she had a memory. She knew most all of her friends' birthday, even their kids' birthday. Then she's going to be missed. She's going to be really missed. But when we were coming up, Tens was a fighter. She didn't play the radio. I remember this certain guy, I won't put him out there, used to buddy a cousin of ours. Tens said, Butch. Who is it? That guy ain't never mess with Butch again. <laughs> Went up on Grand Avenue and Douglas, where we used to hang out. My partner would say, boy, Tens whoop him down. <laughs> but Tens was a sweetheart. She was a sweetheart. She'll make you laugh. I remember when the whole Ohio players played her favorite tune, Skin Tight. She started calling herself Skin Tight. So I'm going to leave y'all with this song that she loved that she nicknamed herself, Skin Tight. Skin Tight, this one for you. Y'all would just clap your hands. That's all, that was her song. We're going to send her home with her song. I don't wear my two better. Thank you. I have forgotten that was her nickname to uh, skin type. Skin type. It not is for the as I knew her. Are there any friends that want to say anything? Remember, his only 
two minutes. Good afternoon, family. For those of you that don't know me, I am Nikki, as Tense knew me. I am her officially daughter-in-law, but she became more like my mom. By her being in Miami and most of the family was up here, once she got sick, I pretty much stopped everything and was there. Whenever she called, whatever she needed, I made sure that she had whatever she needed to get through. One thing she taught me, she was a fighter. I heard Unc say she used to fight back in the days, but even in her olden, at her olden age, she had a will to live. She loved, in spite of whatever she was going through, we still found time to joke about. She be laying up in there talking crazy to me, and I'm like, girl, we ain't having that today. Uh-uh, don't come for me. You know, and she would grab, make sure you stay, whatever you do, just go to the house, get my Bible. She'd be in there praying and, and reading the word. I mean, for her to come back from breast cancer, coma, amputation, this lady was amazing for me. And... I just thank you guys for allowing me to be there for when y'all couldn't be there. And even though she's not here anymore, I still, you know, whenever you guys need me, just call me. I'm there. I pray for you all. And that's all I got to say. Y'all have a blessed one. How y'all doing? Mm -hmm. I'm Terrence, I'm Kenneth grandson. And I just want to share a few memories I have with Aunt Tense. I remember when my mom, when they got Aunt Tense, because she had became sick. And we was like two peas in a pot. Every morning, I crack that door. I'm going to bother her from the early morning to 3 o'clock in the morning. 3 o'clock. I used to mess with her because I, I, I wear chains. And she used to have chains. I say, Tense, I want one of your chains. She say, why you want mine? You got two big ones around your neck. <laughs> she, I say, oh, no, nah, I just want yours. She say, I say, because my name is Deepo. Get, get what she told me. She say, you know where Debo at now, right? <laughs> she say, and if my chains come missing, you got you got a car there with four tires. 
I'm going to flat all of them. I, I remember Tense came. I used to tell Tense, you're not using your walker today. You're going to walk. I'm going to hold your hand. We're going to walk. I went in there every morning just to bother her, keep her going. I think I bothered her too much. <laughs> too much. I drove her crazy. I know I did. She would tell my mama, I don't know what y'all going to do with him. He bothered me all day long. <laughs> but whatever she needed, I was going to give it to her. My mama asked me, she said, she, she asked, she said, Aunt Tent's going to Georgia. I said, I said, all right. She asked me, she said, can you, can you go with me to take her? No problem. I me and Tent's rode up. They was in the U-Haul, uh, uh, auntie. They was in the U-Haul. Me and Tent's was in the car. Me and Tent's was riding. <laughs> we was riding. Tent's say, we got halfway to Georgia Tent say, you ain't got no other music. I'm tired of that rah, 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 rah in my ear. <laughs> she said, she say, God, they throw some Al Green on or something. <laughs> I said, Auntie, you want me to drive to that slow music? I'm tired of that rah, rah. You keep with that rah, 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 rah. I remember her telling me, she was saying in the car, she was like, she was like, oh, I hope you don't got nothing on you here because I ain't going to jail for you. <laughs> She say, I say, nah, I got something in here. She was like, well, you gonna be on your own. <laughs> Cause I'm a did it. Um, she said, I'm a, she say, I'm an old lady. They don't want nothing in there. I say, I say, I say, them girls want you in there. She say, I'll bite them with this teeth. <laughs> she told me, I'll bite them with this teeth. I say, what you mean? She say, I'll chew them up. What you mean? What I mean? Say, ain't nobody finna touch me. You don't know me. I'm Hortense. <laughs> I said, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I just want that shout out by Auntie, man. I love you. I miss you. And rest, baby girl, rest. Thank y'all. Sing a song, just a little walk with talk with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And every time I see her, that's what she wanted to sing. And the last time I saw her was about, I guess, about two or three years. She was in rehab, and I went to see her, and that's what she wanted to sing, just a little talk with Jesus, and everything will be all right. And I always kept that in my mind with whatever I saw her, and uh, I would never forget. She always at Labor, I mean, uh, Fourth of July, Labor Day, she would send me and my wife dinner. And every Veterans Day, she would always give me a card for Veterans. And she never forgot. Even when she was sick, this last, she, she called and said, Happy Veterans Day and Happy uh, Fourth of July. She would do that. And that's what I admired about her. But she was a wonderful, wonderful lady that I got to know. And I'm so glad I get, did get to know her. Then I got to know the rest of her family. So thank you. that was said, I can win this to her tense. And she would always make sure, um, always mispronouncing someone's name, is her tense, you know. So that is her. You know, I, 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 when I first met, when we first met her, my husband and I, she was Sister Lee. And then she, she married um, Chuck. And, and she was always, she was already a member at Civil Blue Lake where uh, Pastor Reverend Wellington Curtis was the pastor. He, that was our pastor there. And we joined and she was already there working in the ministry and other departments. And I remember all the time that she would help cook and she would want to do anything that she could help with. And she would always cook and feed the neighborhood and feed the uh, church and 
send you plates and, and everything, anything that she could do that would seem to make you feel better, she was willing to do. So, you know, she will be missed. She will be missed, not only by her family, but by her friends too. She will be missed. And it shouldn't have been any surprise to us that she was a fighter. I, I, you know, I could tell her spirit, whatever you're doing in the world, God can turn it around and use it for his good, for his glory. She was a fighter, and she fought hard. So, you know, even though we're sad at this time, we can thank God that she was a fighter. She fought a good fight. She finished her race. She kept the faith. So now in store for her is a crown of glory that the God of righteousness will give unto us, her. So, you know, we all must pass this way. We say that she has died, but I say she made a transition from this realm to the next realm. Saints do not die. They just transition to the next life. She's not no longer living on this side, but she is in the hands of God. Her soul and her spirit lives on. Amen. Okay, uh, now we have the resolution of the church. First Lady, Lady Curtis, Martha Curtis. Good afternoon, everyone. Reverend Linda, I just want to let you know, Sister Harris didn't love to cook so much. She, she was a chuck. When, whenever we have an event and we say, what are you bringing, Sister Harris? I'm bringing nothing. Chuck cooking. Okay, well, then how chuck fix this for us. And she would do that. One thing she did like to cook uh, was meatloaf. I loved her meatloaf. She did that very well. But I'm here on behalf of Silver Blue Lakes Missionary Baptist Church in Miami to talk as a church member as well as to give the resolution. When Sister Lee Harris walked into the doors of Silver Blue Lakes Missionary Baptist Church over 20 plus years ago, she came just as the scriptures say, come as you are. And she did just that. She was a little bit tipsy. That's when she used to drink. But I guess she loved the environment so much she kept coming. It didn't stop her. I don't know when it actually happened, but one day God transformed her from her drinking problem. Sister Harris turned out to be one of the best members you would want to have. Even though, like one former member said, Sister Harris is a little rough around the edges. She would speak her mind and was not afraid to let you know how she felt. She loved her church and was willing to do whatever she could as a worker in the church. She was the church usher and sometimes taught Sunday school. Whenever, whatever you ask her to do, she would do it to the best of her ability. She was also very protective of her church. From her apartment, Silver Blue Lakes, across the street from the church, she can see if anyone is parked on the church property that should not be there. She would pick up the phone and she would call her pastor and let her know what's going on at the church. Sometimes Sister Harris acted like she was the first lady. She would at times question me and I would have to tell her to mind her own business. <laughs> she would then say, I'm sorry. She always apologizes when you discipline her. For a bit of humor, Pastor Curtis had planted some flowers on the property. And at the time, there was a Haitian church that used to occupy our church on Sundays from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on Sundays. And someone had drove over some of the flowers. And it so happened that Sister Harris was coming to the church for Sunday school, and she saw what took place. So she loudly told that person, person I'm going to tell pastor on you. She sure did tell Pastor Curtis. As it turned out, it was the Haitian pastor that ran over the flowers. 
So she didn't even give him an opportunity to call the pastor. She did it herself. Sister Harris was a faithful and devoted member and believed in paying tithes. Whenever the doors were open, Sister Harris was there. When the church went out on other activities, Sister Harris was there. Whether the church was on program or not, we could count on Sister Harris going with us. Sister Harris really did not want to leave Miami and her church, but because of her condition, she had no other choice but to be with family members who loved her and could help her. Sister Harris will be truly be missed, and may her soul rest in peace. The resolution. Whereas, dated October 23rd, 2020, City of Miami, Florida, whereas God in his infinite goodness and wisdom has removed from our midst our dearly beloved sister, Hortense Harris. Whereas that in death, we have lost from the church and the community one of its valued members. As a faithful servant of God and dedication to the cause of Christ, her life influenced others. Be it resolved that we extend to the family our deepest sympathy in their loss. While we mourn her going from us, we are resigned to the divine will of our Heavenly Father. We give thanks to God for her life among us. May all rely on him who can heal all sorrows. We further resolve that a copy of this resolution be given to the family and a copy be placed in the church's record. This done by the order of Silver Blue Lakes Missionary Baptist Church on this 23rd day of October, 2021, as a memorial to a fallen soldier. Humbly submitted, First Lady Martha Pinder Curtis, Administrator, Reverend Wellington Curtis, founder and pastor and teacher. Thank you. Night calls for the uh, reading of the obituary in silence. I'm sure we have all read it. So we'll move right along. A poem by Theodora Wills. Wilson. Willis. I'm so sorry. I already, I already told you I mispronounced names. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, family and friends. The title of this poem is I Heard the Angel Say. I thought I saw her face today in the sparkle of the morning sun. And then I heard the angel say her work on earth is done. I thought I heard her voice today, then laughed her hearty laugh, and then I heard the angel say, "This is there is peace, little one. I thought I felt her touch today in the breeze that rustled by, and then I heard the angel say, the spirit never dies. I thought that she had left us for the stars so far above, and then I heard the angel say, she left us with her love. I know that we will all miss her and wants her to return, and then I heard the angel say, it was time to welcome her home. Hallelujah. Now we have acknowledgement by the Dorchester Funeral Home. Resolution. New birth, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, Senior Pastor. Resolution. In loving memory of your sister Hortense Harris, a beloved sister, friend, and a woman of God, a gifted writer and a poet. To Sister Wanda Jones, siblings, and the entire family, Dr. Jamal Bryant and the New Birth Missionary Baptist Church expresses our deepest condolence to you in the passing of your sister, Hortense Harris. It is our petition before the Lord that you be strengthened and comforted by eternal promise in his word and grace with his presence that only come through the Holy Spirit. In a time of unprevailing events, we must lean heavily on our faith and stretch our arms toward God. 
as we search for methods to soothe our pain and ways to regain my peace. It takes God's supernatural strength to get us through these extraordinary, extraordinary challenges. But we have a blessing in knowing that God is with us. He promised never to leave us nor to forsake us. Sister Hortense was a loving, kind, family-oriented person who was a true giver. She was a dedicated servant of the Lord who did not mind helping people. She was much adored by you and the entire family. Sister Hortense was extremely brilliant, having a brain like a computer. She remembered everyone's birthday and always sent out birthday cards with a token of love in them. Sister Hortense was a gifted writer of poetry. Sister Jones and all the siblings, we pray that when you think about this great woman of God, that you're strengthened by God's promises in Isaiah 41 and 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I would hold, uphold you with my right, righteous right hand. Therefore, be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be placed in the permanent records of our church in the memory of Sister Hortense Harris, done by the order of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church on this 23rd day of October in the year of our Lord, 2021. Dr. Jamel Harrison Bryant, Senior Pastor, New Birth Missionary Baptist Church, 6400 Woodruff Road, Lithonia, Georgia. In appreciation, the family would like to acknowledge any special friends, members, or friends who, have, who we have not named. Thank you for your prayers, visits, cards, flowers, and, and kind thoughts during a very difficult time for the family. We love you. May God bless each of you. Amen. Amen. Now we have a selection by Crystal Cobbs. Okay, I'm glad you know your name. <laughs> Come on, Crystal. So I want to dedicate this song to our family, and it was something that Auntie Dee Dee said that Auntie Sims liked this song, so I'm going to sing it for her um, in her memory. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he, his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I am free. His eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches. 
touches me. I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I am free. His eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches. is free. We are still tied up in these old bodies that aches and hurt and give us all kind of pain. We're aching to be free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Give her one more hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now we come to words of comfort by my pastor. Even though I'm no longer at the church, he's still my pastor. Pastor Wellington Curtis. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend Linda. Reverend Linda Stokely. Um, please be seated. I'm touched this afternoon to be here with you that other part of Sister Lee's family. I somewhat feel at home being right here in Hinesville. Now, preacher, preachers talks a lot, but I was asked to do the eulogy Someone called from out of Hinesville and requests Denise and requests that I uh, consent to the eulogy. And indeed, I'm grateful to do just that. But there are several reasons why I'm happy to be here uh, this morning, this afternoon. I'm sitting right over here, and I see Curtis, Curtis Irwin. He was born in 1951. My name is Wellington Curtis. Curtis is the last name. Most folk use Curtis as a first name. But I was born with a last name from Sister, ha Sister Harris's descendant, she, she was descended from the Bahamas. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, my Curtis is from Exuma. That's where my grandfather and great-grandpa and Ma is from. I'm going to talk about a few things. But he was born in 51, Curtis Irwin. I was born in 51, but in West Palm Beach. So now, why happy to be in Hinesville? Because my wife, I didn't know her name was Martha until I met her. I thought that was unusual because we got most strange African names today. We don't name nobody Mary and Martha anymore. But it was 49, 50 years ago I met her. And I had no problem with that name. And uh, she was exactly what I was looking for. She was a secretary. And I said with a vision in my head, I don't know why, until today I'm beginning to find out. 
that I wanted a secretary for my wife because I need somebody to help me keep things in order. And there she is. Now, I have a grand aunt, my grandmother's sister. They're from Louisville, Georgia. Not too far from here, about 115 miles or so up north. Yeah. And um, we were Smiths. And my grandmother had a sister by the name of Martha. And Martha married a gentleman by the name of Vanderbilt Wright in Louisville, Georgia. Vanderbilt and Martha, my grand aunt, they had a son by the name of, we called him, he was the junior. His name was Hubert Wright, junior. A senior, rather. I, I knew junior. Hubert, if you please, married a, a lovely young lady from out of Hinesville. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's why I feel somewhat at home. And I kept telling my wife, I said, this looked like Atlanta. I was in Atlanta for several months or so on a tour working at the airport, and this appeared to be just like it in some areas. So I feel, I really feel at home. Wren's Georgia is similar. Now getting here, I'm not going to take long. I got to do my introduction because I want to be comfortable. I believe you have already heard the eulogy by my wife. I would think so. She was in detail telling you. But, but I have to bring the family comfort, some words of comfort. And you want to know, that guy she hanged out with in Miami, despite what people said about him, you want to know what made Hortons stuck with him, wouldn't you? Well, I'm going to talk about some of that. But, but, but I am just elated. Now, nobody knows this pain like the folks who feels it. And if some of you here don't understand what I'm talking about, just keep on living. Even Jesus wept. Even Jesus got folk attention when he, when he, especially the sister of the brother that he was close to, when he said to the sister, I am the resurrection. Do you believe that? And so it, it gets your attention, especially when you speak with clarity on certain matters. It, it, I believe that's where Horton's got some of that from. When you speak with clarity, telling people to stay in their lane, when folk get in your lane and you're very clear at them, you're rough around the collar. You, you, you. You, you make folk scratch where they don't itch. Folk get uneasy with you. But I want to tell you this morning, life is like flying a kite. Anybody here ever flew a kite? Let me tell you something about it. A kite is at its best when the strong wind hits it. The stronger the wind, the higher it flies. And Sister Lee was somewhat like that. Adversity is an opportunity. Some folk may not like you, but you got to stand. And when you know your concept, your ideologies, your vision, your outlook differs some, from somebody else. Don't give up. Because Jesus informed everybody. 
love ye one another. There are some folk who believe when they get a call from Jesus that, that they can just discipline whomever they want to. Thank you, ma'am. They feel like they got the key. And so if they don't want you around, they can get rid of you. Y'all ever hear anybody talk like that? If you get out your place, they'll straighten you out. Well, that's why the prophet told us, don't be dismayed. Don't get discouraged. The just shall live by faith. Not through personal cooperation, but faith in Christ. I left out the other thing that made me comfortable. She had a brother named Butch. Is that your name, Butch? Who? who? She had a cousin named Butch. But by now you know my name is Butch. Called me Butcher Boy. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about the blessedness of a person who dies in the Lord. I stopped by to tell you this morning a few things. I know I've said enough. But I made it my business to get here. Even when the GPS tried to create confusion, because we passed you last night, this morning, it took us, and we went roundabout, and when we got here, y'all were just ready, but we got here, because we kept, we kept at peace. Now, years ago, I would have gotten upset with First Lady Martha. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, how, that's how manipulative the spirit forces are. It'll work with somebody you love and have them do things that push your button. I just sat quiet. If she's responsible to do something, I go along with it. Whatever happens, we're going to move by faith. I don't care who you are. Those whom God joined together, let no man or woman put asunder. So, 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 so I came here to tell you today that Sister Harris was faithful to the cause of Silver Blue Lakes' mission work, as First Lady Curtis said. She embraced what I would call my personal pioneering ethics in Miami-Dade County. Because not too many people, especially those high white, you know, high collar, white collar folk, you don't, you don't challenge them. And first, they want to know how much money you got in your pocket. Is he got any money? But, but, but what I call my pioneering ethics. I don't need nobody's approval. When folks walked away from our ministry, Sister Harris, she hunkered down. She stayed with us. Is that right, First Lady Curtis? Yeah. Folk, folks may have questioned her passion for Silver Blue Lakes Missionary Baptist Church. They don't call me doctor. I'm just Reverend Curtis. Folks may have questioned her, her passion for our ministry, but, but she kept coming, and she kept giving, and giving it her all, as best as I could interpret it. They, they called her pastor insane and crazy. Don't I sound like that this morning? I don't? Well, I got records to prove it. They call her pastor insane and crazy. But she believed in her pastor. Trust me, folks. And, and, and she loved me. 
not just me, she was crazy about my wife. Because she called the wife, she called First Lady Curtis, when she go places to funeral services like this, and there is the obituary program that you're looking at, on the back of it, it indicate that First Lady Curtis was the printer. She just let everybody know, that's my First Lady. <laughs> Didn't she do that? Yeah, she did it. Yeah, yeah. So she made me proud. Yeah. But, but I want to clear up something here. Just to let you know how it came about that she became the managerial, uh, how you say, she marshaled the janitorial upkeep of our ministry, the church, the church ground. Let me, let me, let me, just, let me just share this with you. Her and her husband, Chuck, well, they were married by me. I guess by now you know that. Okay. All right. First Lady Curtis was the one who I could have counted on to take care of the grounds, the premises of the church. On Saturdays, every Saturday, this poor young lady, she'd get on, she don't like for me to say that because she don't look poor. And she tell you, she, she tell me, when I tell folk, I'm a poor preacher. No, nah, no. Nah. She, she, she don't like for me to say that. But yes, we are. In a sense, we're rich in Christ. But I know my place. I know who are the elites. I know who carry themselves like elites and feel like they're better than some. I do. I know. I felt that pain in my life. Thank you. Thank you. But, but, but First Lady Curtis, she would take care of the church inside and out. She'd sweep the grounds like my grandmother did every weekend to prepare our sanctuary for worship right there in Miami-Dade County. Yeah, yeah. But see, it was at a business meeting that Minister Burnett, Minister Pamela, or Pamela Burnett, if you please, she made a motion to make Sister Harris the, janitor, the janitorial manager because she didn't want to see her first lady working the way she worked in our ministry. That's how it came about that Sister Harris was the caretaker of our ministry while she was alive. And when she got married, like First Lady said, she don't know when it happened, but there was some discipline. She's coming through those doors. When she got in one day, she decided, I ain't sleeping in the bed with that man without him putting a ring on it. And she said, it's going to be some change. And she kept making changes. I didn't know what was happening. I knew I was preaching. I was teaching. But, you know, a lot of people come around you to plot, to to, to, to analyze and to find, you know, avenues where they can disrobe you. She wasn't like that. Some folk may have tried to penetrate her, but she was crazy about her support. I want to tell you, her tithes and her offering helped me to look the way I'm looking. <laughs> Reverend Linda... Reverend Randolph, Stokely, both of them, their tithes and their offering helped me to look the way I'm looking and to be as courageous as, I'm, as I am today. I like to honor people where well, you should honor them. The Bible says if you give a preacher a glass of water, you're going to receive a preacher's reward. You know that, don't you? Yeah, he said that. And, and, and so, and so I, as the word of God says, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home now. It, it says, and you'll find it in Revelations, the 14th chapter and verse 13. If you find it quickly, just a few words from Pastor Curtis, and I'm out of here. Of course, I have to do the benediction. And
and to this wonderful staff here, this facility, if I have overdone my time, you can pull my coattail. I'm all right, because I know I like to talk too much. Just give me the mic. I'll let folk know who I am. Mm -hmm. I was born in America, so I'm good. My folk came on the boat. They didn't come voluntarily. We weren't no migrants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you there? It says what? Bless, right? Am I right? It says, and I heard a voice from heaven, and it said to me, write, if you please, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. He goes on to say, from henceforth, from now on, you see, they're blessed. And he says, and, and I want to affirm that for, yes, said the Spirit, that, that they may rest from their labors and their works surely follow them. I want to tell you her work following her is going to continue. And she's got nieces and nephews and what have you. I've seen them. I've heard you. Some of you. It's a whole bunch of y'all. There are some things she said, skin tight. I didn't know she initiated that. She just told me, as Pastor Kurt, they used to call me skin tight. But she did that. And, 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 and I'll tell you, there's certain things about her that folks is going to remember. You're going to continue to remember it as long as you live, and you're going to find yourself walking in it. Yes. And that's how it is with all of us. Somebody's going to say something somewhere, someday, somehow, and they're in that strategic position that have caused your light to come to life. I'm the type of guy, when you condemn me, I don't like for you to come back to me and tell me you're sorry about condemning me. No, you got to talk to God for that. No, I, I tell you, you have to talk to God because I was working for the same God you was working for. And if I offended you and you took it the wrong way, and you sought after dethroning me and hurting me and bringing me down as if you were him because something did happen to me. And if he didn't do it, you got a big problem. Are you with me? Are you all with me? And that's how she was. That's why she was able to walk with me and carry on the mission. There were times when folks came into the mission from across the street. Because, because she was involved with recruiting. She would get out in the street and collect monies. We've got a record. She collect money to help that ministry look like it is today. And it ain't like many high-class places today. We're still coming together. And I like to say to folk, the proof is in the pudding. And I will cherish her work. I'm proud of her work. I hope I brought you word of comfort. I pray that it'll continue to grow. I pray that you'd march in it. And I pray that God will continue to guide you. That when we know something, when we feel something, that we will help to bring people together instead of scattering people. Because Jesus said it himself, hereby the world will know that ye are my disciple when you have what? Love one for another. And I think you heard my M.L. King said it. 
Mm -hmm. The one thing everybody needs today is love. Everybody wants to be recognized. If you don't believe it, keep on living. I must say, the young lady that gave her, her uh, tribute as a friend, when, I, when she walked up here, she was looking. She'd been so much of a friend, she looked like that. <laughs> Anybody ever tell you that? I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, she looked like it. Look, look at the features. And, and, and God has been good. His mercies endured forever. But, but in that verse that I gave you, the Spirit told him what to write. Sister Harris knew there was another prophet that God spoke to, the Spirit spoke to, and said to him, write the vision. Well, we don't know what that vision is because he never wrote it, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he said the, the vision is yet for an appointed time. And when that vision comes forth that you wrote or was supposed to have written, it will come and it will not lie. Blessed are the dead who hold up the blood-stained banner, who carried out the will that God required of all of us. You need to hold out, hold out to the end. Because it just might happen that if he may come in the morning, or he may come in the noontime, or he may come at night, it means that you won't be dead, hey? Some of you, some of us, right? Because he'd come any time, right? So if he come any time, and if we're fortunate that it's in our time, we wouldn't have to what? Say it again? Yeah. That's why I like to straighten out people. Now, hold that. Now, don't say we all going to die. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on now, because you don't know when he's coming. And if he come tomorrow, tonight, or whatever, you're going to die and then get ready again? No, no. That's my pioneering ethics that she fell in love with, and she stayed with me. And I'll tell you again, she was an honorable, faithful member, and blessed Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. For henceforth they shall rest from their labor, and their works will follow them. Amen. Now I'm going to follow your program here. It called for the benediction of. Will you please stand with me? Can you open that for me? Open it, please. Thank you. Let us look to the Lord. Our Father and God, we humbly stand in your presence as we officiate even at weddings. We say it's in your presence. And so we know our standing today is in your presence. Thank you for bringing this family together because of the life of a member of this family that have blessed us all. Though our heart is saddened, we can hear in a distance 
that you say to us, weep not. You require that we be joyful. For it's at this stage where the wicked ceases from trouble, troubling us, and our weary souls will be at rest. Continue to bless this facility, this enterprise that function here in this state of Georgia, bless them, give them more success in pleasing hearts. But go with this family, assure them that you make no mistakes. All that is accomplished and work and wrought is through your willing. For no good thing you would withhold from us. And so now unto you, the only true living and wise God, I commit also, Sister Harris, to you, to this earth from which she came as well. For dust to dust, ashes to ashes. He shall return. May the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of you, Heavenly Father, and the continued fellowshipping and joy of your Holy Spirit indwelling in us, now and forever and henceforth, all the people of God said, Amen. Thank you very much. Reverend Lynn. And now we have the procession when all God's children get to heaven.
charge of music. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I didn't look at the bottom. I would have warned you in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson County, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Burke, between Burke and Jefferson County, right My there. Husband, okay, I'm from Washington County. Oh, yeah? My husband is from Dade County. Miami Dade. Miami Dade. Yeah. Yeah, we've been here since 1780. Your husband is from Dade County? Uh huh. And my wife from Dade County. What was your. My husband's from Henderson. Oh, Henderson? Yeah, um, Ike Henderson with the seven boys and the one girl. Yes. Well, all of them dead except Ronald and uh, uh, Lincoln. Ronald Lincoln and Ike. Ike Senior, Junior, lives in Arizona. Okay. Uh, Ike Senior, of course, is dead. Ike Senior's dead, the girl is dead, and two of the boys are dead. And your yeah. wife? My wife? No, 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 no. no. She's from the Williams. Williams? Yes, uh, they're South Miami. But I'm pretty sure you know a cousin that Jackson, they all pastors. Oh, really? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, they got seven Baptists. Uh, oh, you're talking about Albert Jackson? Yes, sir, that's her first cousin. Okay, uh -huh. and, and, uh, yeah, and uh, what's called too? Uh, Arthur and... I don't know the brother. The, 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 the other one's baby, yeah. but he yeah. got a big one up. Yeah, they do. Yeah, listen. I gotta get over here. Okay. Yes, sir. Take nice care. Nice to see you. My pleasure. Be safe on the road. Okay. Yeah, please. Actually, you're going to come out of white thing. I had to go to the blue girl from white quick. Thank you. I know that's right. I better go too before I leave. Man.